The Birth of a Nation is one of the most influential films of all time, and at the same time one of the most hateful and racist ever made. Upon its initial release, it set up a chain of events that would lead to some of the greatest films ever made. Like with how the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand led to World War I and pretty much every major conflict following it, The Birth of a Nation is a film equivalent to this. The Birth of a Nation was a film that right up until the 1960s was considered to be the greatest film ever made. Every film from Citizen Kane to The Godfather from Star Wars to The Lord of the Rings, in some form or another, was influenced by this film. The Birth of a Nation was the first true Hollywood blockbuster. Without it, there may be no Hollywood. The film was the first to be screened at the White House. Woodrow Wilson, the president at the time, described it like writing history with lightning. I disagree immensely, but this film was a lightning bolt. D.W. Griffith took a great risk in making this film, and it paid off big time for him. He introduced several new filming techniques that hadn't been used before, such as a close-up, the pan, and the zoom. Just the mention of this film, however, can send angry shivers down the spine. So how was this infamous film? Was it as, a, as offensive as its reputation has made it out to be? Or is it a little exaggerated? Unfortunately, the film lives up to its reputation for the most part. To my surprise, while well, I was watching the first half, it was no way near as offensive as I thought it would be. Don't get me wrong, the first half is racist, the cringe-worthy use of blackface, not even attempting to make the actors come off as genuine black people. The use of the N-word is also used a few times in the first half. These racist elements are kind of forgivable, as it is a century-old film and was only released 50 years after the end of the American Civil War. Actual Civil War veterans would have been in the seats watching this film upon its release. The first half of this film is in fact pretty decent. It follows two di different families, one from the south and one from the north. Like with Gone for Wind, the birth of a nation follows the lives of these people, left behind during the Civil War and the trials they must go through. But unlike Gone for Wind, the film also shows the trials of the men on the battlefield. The first half of the film has some amazing shots, such as the recreation of some of the Civil War battles, which is shot spectacularly and remains even a century later some of the best war scenes for the film. Other great scenes in the first half include the recreation of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. The scene is put together to resemble the actual assassination and the theatre that he was in. The scene is probably my favourite in the film, and unlike most of the historical imagery in this film, this does, this does seem to be very genuine. Shot with new pirate pioneering techniques, Griffith, Griffith zooms up onto Wilkes' face and onto his gun. These new techniques may seem like nothing today, but for the audiences in 1915, this was like watching Jurassic Park in its re revolutionary sense. When the second half does begin though, it consistently gets worse and worse. The plot surrounding the second half is that it follows the recon reconstruction period and how the poor, innocent whites are being persecuted by these oppressive free black slaves and the radical republicans who want equal rights for the free slaves because nothing says radical than wanting equal rights and being able to share the footpath with your fellow man. This leads to the creation of the Ku Klux Klan, who are the heroes of the film. That sounds wrong, because it is wrong. The film glorifies the Klan and forgets that the Klan are not a heroic cause but an extreme anti-Semitic, racist, sexist, terrorist organization that brutally killed people. It's like someone goes ahead and makes a film depicting ISIS as a heroic cause and completely ignoring the atrocities that they have committed. The second half is a racist mess and any good part, such as some of the scene shot, are completely lost by this obscene message the film was trying to send. During the second half, the stereotypes get even worse. Sure, I've come to expect it, but it's embarrassing to watch. The use of the so-called black slang was used whenever a black person spoke, and the film tries to paint a picture that these people are unfit to be free and need to be put back in their place. According to the film, black people are all drunk, dumb, simple-minded, barefoot criminals, filling every black stereotype you can think of. The Birth of a Nation is an incredible piece of blatant racism directly leading to the clan's revival and the deaths of many more innocent people. 
first half is decent and entertains, but the second, all possible entertainment is lost. A film that I despise and respect at the same time. Respect for showing the true potential of where cinema can go, and despise because of the racist nonsense in this film. It is one of the most controversial films ever made, not just in our time where history has been revised and the world become more egalitarian, but it was controversial for 1915. This caused a huge uproar from liberals and the African American community. While the film is important, it is impossible to ignore its flaws. Unless you are some racist Nazi. Though it has some great shots and part one was okay, the second half really destroys it. For me, I can't get over the racist elements throughout this film and the birth of a nation, because of it, receives a D. And because I couldn't find anywhere else to put it, apparently Jesus also approves of the KKK. Thanks guys, and if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe for more.